Hello, we are back again on the Coach T podcast show. I will say I'm extremely honored to have this guest. Uh, she is someone that is also a former Indiana University grad. She has a long, there you go, Hoosiers. She has an extensive background, um, someone that is very empowering, very inspiring, and has worked her way to where she is now, um, has grinded her way there. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Paula Buckholter, who is an assistant director for championships engagement with the NCAA. And she began with the organization in 2002. She currently manages NCAA event marketing for select championships to promote ancillary events and enhance overall fan experience. In addition, she oversees NCAA youth tournaments and events, um, an initiative that introduces youth to NCAA championships. As mentioned, she is a graduate of Indiana University. That is where she was a former college track and field athlete, and her professional career started in sports marketing, promotions, and events in the athletic department at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. She later worked with my Detroit Lions of the NFL in promotions and sponsorship fulfillment. Paula is a native of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and has an undergraduate degree in telecommunications and criminal justice and a graduate degree in communications. Um, she's extremely passionate about community activism, uh, volunteering, and she serves on the leadership team with Raising Queens, which is an organization that offers programs for empowering women and girls to find their purpose. Absolutely love that. She also volunteers with the Light of the World Christian Church Food Pantry. Um, so again, without further ado, I would like to introduce Paula Buckholter. Great background, by the way. Um, you have your hands in a lot of different things. Uh, I love to see it. Um, and I know the audience would love to hear more about your upbringing and you know, what led you down the path that you're on. Um, thanks, Terrence. Um, wow. Um, um, yeah, this, that's Take a, a lot, lot of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's a lot. Was that all for me? That's all my stuff? Okay. <laughs> I, I should be like 100 years old instead of the Oh, no, you, you've I, done uh, a lot. You've done a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when you talk about um, a little bit, I guess, about what led me to sports, probably like a lot of your, your viewers, I, I just grew up loving sports. Um, I also grew up in an era where I think women were just, and girls just starting to get opportunities to participate in sports. So just to give you a little bit of, of how I even got started. So my mom and dad are originally from Mississippi, uh, moved to the Pontiac, Michigan area, became teachers there. And uh, my sister and I, so we were born in Pontiac, we attended uh, Oakland Christian School. I don't know if you're familiar with it. At that time, it was a small school that had no sports for girls. Um, mm -hmm. So while we loved the school, when we got a chance to move out into the suburbs, Bloomfield Hills, my parents asked us, do you guys want to stay with Oakland Christian or do you maybe want to try the public school here, which was Avondale? And we said, you know what? Like, I think we might want to do sports. Like the cheerleading was fun, but maybe there's mm -hmm. some sports. And so our like eyes were just open to the opportunities that came through participating in sports. So my dad was a long time Detroit Lions fan. We grew up attending sporting events, participating in all kinds of youth activities. So when I got to IU, you know, pretty successful high school running career, um, like again, my eyes were open to the opportunities. Like I had no idea all these different sports existed. And like, while I thought I was great, like I was in lanes next to people that had been to like Olympic trials. So yeah. some of the practice times I felt like were some of my personal best. So while um, I was happy to have had that opportunity to run and ran for about a year and a half, pretty early on, I realized like, I don't know that this is going to last yeah. for me for four years. My parents yeah. are financing. A lot. I wasn't like a scholarship athlete. I was a walk on, right. but right. I loved it. And, and so I began to think, what, what can I as a, as a young woman at that time do in sports? And it was broadcasting. That was really the only time I'd ever seen women in sports. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did an internship with a CBS affiliate at the time. Hated it. Like learned mm. firsthand, like, these women are like reading teleprompters. They're not really writing their own stories. And the amount of time that women have to spend in hair and makeup 
yeah. is like crazy where the if you're broadcasting with a dude he can be a thousand and ten years old and his career is going to keep going but as soon right. as things start falling down or my hair starts getting funky like maybe there's not a place for me so started learning more about oh there's like sports marketing there's sports communications um so just to tie this up again i wasn't aware of a whole bunch of opportunities i had did an internship with the uh, pan am games one summer when it was in indianapolis and then i was getting ready to graduate and uh i thought well i've always loved football i'll write the detroit lions a letter and just ask them if they would give me a tour and talk to me about opportunities really? in professional football yes just wrote a letter <laughs> just wrote a letter somebody answered that letter and somebody invited me when I came home for Christmas break of my senior year to stop in and, and have a talk with them. And so I did that, probably had on jeans and a sweatshirt, like it wasn't a formal interview, learned more about community relations, marketing, sponsorships, all that. And I was like, hey, y'all, this was really cool. You know, peace, have a great, you know, rest of your year. I came on back to school and I sent them a thank you note and included my resume because I'm not even sure that I had sent them my resume when we first met and they were like oh my gosh you've done like you've worked with the athletic department at IU you're a former student athlete you did the Pan Am games like we're thinking of starting our first ever internship program would you be interested and I was the first along with another gentleman um, the first interns with the Detroit Lions that wow. came as a result of just writing a letter Wow, that's a yep. great story. I would have yep. never guessed. You wrote a, wrote a letter. Um, yep. Like you said, didn't think much of it. Um, just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity for a tour. Yep. Sent your resume, um, yep. smartly enough, right? Send your yep. resume so they can get a glimpse of who you are. Yeah. And, you know, that really led you down the path of where you are now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah and, and, and for someone that, again, I'm also from Michigan, um, also went to Indiana, also a former athlete, um, student athlete, because I always want to preface that. Yes. When you are, you know, like yourself, when I, when I was going through the transition of, okay, what am I going to do after sports? Because I was someone that, you know, played a major sport, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and probably held on to the idea of there's a chance that I can play professional sports maybe a little too long. Um, <laughs> you know, got a, got a short opportunity. But at the same time, I think for me, Initially, it was a little tougher saying, okay, you have to be done with the sport now. Now you have to go on to your next life. You know, for someone that had to deal with that as well, how was that transition getting out of sports and really focusing on, okay, my life is not going to be sports necessarily as a player. Where do I take it from here? Right. That's a, that's a great question, Terrence, and one that um, a, a lot of uh, – a lot of former student athletes certainly and professional athletes face at some point in their life. And, um, and it's hard. Like it was hard for me. I think right or wrong, a lot of our identity when you, when you participate in sports and especially if you, if you have some success is, is tied to that sport. Right. And for a lot of us, for as long as we have been, we've been participating in sports. So you're used to, you're used to all of it. You're used to the crowds. You're used to the perks. You're used to the hard work. You're used to being surrounded by people who are like, like-minded, who are out there grinding along mm -hmm. with you, the whole being part of a team thing. So I will tell you, it was, it was very hard. It's also hard because I felt like I was letting down maybe my family, you know, who, who took so much pleasure in, in being tied to somebody who was very tied to sports. Um, it was a lot. And that's why I think you see more and more folks who don't handle it well. Like there's a mental mm -hmm. piece of it. Um, if you're a professional, there's a, a financial piece of it. Um, but yeah, it, it was hard. I think um, to just take it a step further, what, what really helped me is I think one, my faith and um, always, you know, my parents, while they enjoyed me participating in sports, certainly they weren't those type of parents where unfortunately you see a lot nowadays where they lived through me. Yeah, exactly. Well. Exactly. That t keeps that love of sport. Even if I can't be out front, is there something right. behind the scenes that I can do? Is there, is there, can I still have some purpose to what I'm doing? That's very important to me too. Is there a way that I can still have some way of giving back community wise or to others mentor? Yeah. That was very important. So once I was able to find those pieces, 
I was good. Yeah, and, 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 you know, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that, you know, you had parents that they didn't live vicariously through huh. your athletic endeavors. And even for me, I tell people all the time, like, I love my parents to death. Um, <laughs> but they didn't really care about sports, to be honest. Um, I, don't think my, I don't think my mother ever played a sport in her life. Um, my father played in high school a little bit. But, you know, yeah. their, their, their focus for me, especially me as a, a young African-American male, was that get your education. My mom always said, when you're 18, yeah. you have to leave this home. Um, and she would say, like, when you're 18, you're leaving, whether that's hopefully that's going to college. But if that's going to the military, yeah. so be it. Whatever it is, you, you need to have a plan. Um, and you need to understand that at 18, you are your life is, is your life at that point in time. So take it on. Do everything you need to do uh, beforehand. Have a plan. And my parents are always, you know, always supportive, always, you know, gave me the freedom to have passions and to follow those passions. And, you know, that led me to, you know, obviously going down the athletic road, but, you know, even if it wasn't for sports, I would, I would have gone to college and I would have <laughs> gotten into something, you know, that I was passionate about. And I think also, you know, coming up in a two parent home has yeah. definitely helped that. And, um, you know, not to say you, you can't make, a life out of uh, out of life without you know having two parents, but I know for me it has definitely helped. Um, you know, father has really taught me how to you know be a man and take care of your responsibilities, and my mother has taught me you know what what she has. So I think that's a big piece to it as well, um, because there are a lot of athletes that, as you mentioned, their identity mm -hmm. is is woven into them being mm -hmm. an athlete. Right. But you could be a hall of famer. I feel like I say this all the time. You can be a Hall of Famer in whatever sport. You can retire. You could be Tom Brady. You can retire at 45 years old. But at the end of the day, after those years, you still have a second life to live. Yeah, that's um, right. So you have to really plan for life after sports. And you are a perfect example of loving sports, mm -hmm. um, wanting to stick around sports. So you have now a role where you are working in sports and you always have. And that's something that I, I if I had to ask you, you've always enjoyed, you know, the work that you do, because again, it, it's all started from a passion of yours Absolutely. and involves sports. So what is your role on a day-to-day -day basis with the NCAA? Sure. Um, so Terrence, I work in a department, just, just to give a little background, the NCAA, the headquarters for the National Collegiate Athletic Association is in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, while we have a small office in the DC area that really handles a lot of our like um, governmental um, types of situations, our main office is in Indianapolis, about a yeah. little over 500 employees, a bunch of different departments. Um, Certainly there's an enforcement department, there's membership services. Um, we have probably 1,200 member institutions. So um, just to give folks a little background in that, a member institution for the NCAA is a division one, two, or three NCAA yeah. college, university, or conference. So there's roughly about 1,200 of those across the nation that feed into the NCAA. So while the NCAA is the national office, we really are made up of our members. So yes. I love it when people are like, you put my school on probation. Well, like we are made up of member institutions. We pull representatives from those members that, that hear cases, if you will, that decide on rule changes, that kind of thing. And that's yeah. how those decisions are made. But um, headquartered here in Indianapolis, a bunch of different departments from travel, to uh, leadership services, to diversity and inclusion, operations, logistics, HR, like just- Seems like a lot of roles, right? Uh, you know, uh, yeah. A yeah. lot, accounting, yeah. you know, people yeah. just think of like, all you guys do is sports. So our group is the uh, championships group. Um, the NCAA has 20, I'm gonna get this wrong, 23, 24 uh, sports. And, um, you know, that's what we do, my job specifically in championships engagement is to select uh, the championships that we feel um, could benefit from having a team that uh, promotes some of the 
events around that particular championship. So okay. uh, let me give you an example. So the championships that I work with include um, Division One men's and women's soccer, uh, wrestling, women's gymnastics, uh, Division One women's final four, divisions one, two, and three, men's lacrosse. Okay. So nice. for a couple of those championships uh, on the marketing end, it's called event marketing. Um, while we're excited about actually having the championship, our charge is to make sure that fans know when they attend that championship that there are things that they can attend and support around that okay. championship. Yep. So certainly on a larger scale, Women's Final Four, we're going to have concerts. We're going to have a fan festival. We're going to have some youth initiatives like a Read to the Final Four program. We're going to have a bounce program in the community where kids are going to get free Wilson basketballs. And they're going to be encouraged to bounce those basketballs through the streets of their city. Um, and, and our job is to make sure that people in that community know that these events are going on. So are we going to buy billboards? Are we going to take advantage of maybe some free opportunities? So maybe there's a pro team in that city. So can we work with the local organizing committee who works with us to host that championship to run some spots during halftime or on the billboards of those uh, professional events? Yeah. And again, I think the whole deal is, um, Terrence, is to leave a footprint in that community. So certainly going to have a lot of fans that come from all over the United States, depending on the championship, to attend that championship. And they're going to pay a lot of money. In a lot of cases, those championships might be sold out. But what about the people who live in that community who maybe aren't a basketball fan or a lacrosse fan? Right. What can we provide and do to make sure they are – they feel like they're a part of that championship because it, yeah. it, it, it's a great, it's a great honor for a city. It's also a lot of hard work for that city to host an NCAA championship. So that's in yeah. a nutshell what we do on the event marketing end. There's a whole nother youth initiative that we can talk about a little later if you want. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about your community service, right. Okay. And, and all, and you giving back, it seems like a huge passion of yours and, to me, someone that gives back to the community and has a passion to volunteer and just their time, their resources, I think that's someone that that comes from the heart. Um, you know, especially when you, it's not glorious, it's, you don't, you're not in the limelight because of it. Um, so truly, that seems like something you are thoroughly passionate about. So talk about just your you giving back to the community and and where that that passion comes from. Awesome, thanks, Terrence. Um, you know. I will say, let me tell you how this started. I have a mom and dad who are like big into um, philanthropy and, and giving back in activism and all of that. Um, I mentioned that my mom and dad are from Mississippi. My mom and dad uh, were, were the first in their families to have an opportunity to attend college. Uh, my mom comes from a family of 10, my dad 11. And uh, it was important to them as it was for my parents that we have opportunity. So just like you, you said, your mom and your mom is lovely. I want to tell a story before I was doing <laughs> My parents were like, um, there will be no gap years. There will be no, you know, trying to find yourself after your senior year, like you're going to school because yeah. they were products of, of, of education and they knew that that would create opportunities for us to have, you know, just a decent life. And I get it. College isn't for everybody. Um, however, in this household in which I'm sitting right now, right. Um, that that was that was it for us. Um, so I, my mom, for example, was uh, jailed as a college student at Jackson State, marching when um, Medgar Evers was killed. He was, mm. um, I think, the field secretary for uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and the NAACP in Jackson, Mississippi. And so, yeah, they wow. as students decided to march. Um, I think my dad marched too. I think when the police came, my dad ran, but uh, mm. my mom didn't. And um, they were jailed at at the Coliseum where where football was played. And they were, yeah. my mom talks about being there like three days with no ability to talk to representation, no, no yeah. talking I'm about what they're right. World, world country, you know. A hundred percent. And that has always just kind of stuck with me. Because, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, like, how scary, you know, this is like when there's, like, whites only and colored only water fountains. Mm -hmm. and, and that she took a stand on something 
um, because she felt so passionately about it. And um, again, growing up with, I call her like a, a warrior, like that is is just a part of my DNA yes. as well as my yes. sister. So I do those things because what my mom did created a path and opportunity for me. And what I hope to do is to do the same with others. Um, selfishly, sometimes I know I was between jobs at one time, my aunt was a church secretary. And so I just started to not go crazy going up to the church to help her. Mm -hmm. And then my eyes were opened about like, there's so many opportunities to help with this, with this church, whether it was serving food to, to people who were funeralizing a family member, mm -hmm. whether it was, uh, helping with the mission that was a, it was a, a, a shelter for people who, who had lost their homes affiliated with this church. And it was very humbling for me because yeah. I just, the way I grew up, probably the way you grew up, I didn't know that there was a world that looked like that. Um, yeah. So I did it honestly, because I needed something to do and I needed something to make me feel better, but it has now evolved into something that I feel like it's part of my responsibility Yeah. to help yeah. and to give. Yeah, no, I, Again, I love it. And, you know, I think right now with everything that's going on, um, we realize um, and we see that we need one another. Yes. yes. We, we truly need one another. We need one another to, uh, you know, have, have a day to day life um, yep. comfortably. Uh, we need each other to help us smile. We need each other just to feel each other's energy. That's right. Um, because, you know, like you said, you, you started you started it all because you kind of had free time. You had something to do. You didn't want to go crazy. And you just wanted to be around other people. You wanted right. to help other people. Um, and I think a lot of what's going on right now that that uh, showcases that. Um, yeah. And yeah. And, Perfect. and let me add one thing to that before I lose this thought, because I like yeah. where you're going. It just made me think of this. I think, too, when you when you work and or you're a student athlete, a professional athlete, you can kind of become isolated from some of these things that are happening, you know, because yeah. whether it's right or wrong, sometimes those things don't really touch our world. Mm -hmm. And we're moving so fast, we're getting ready for the next game, we're getting ready for the next event. And, and while we're looking at the news and stuff, if it doesn't, doesn't it affect us. Us. We're it's like, us. It's like, yeah. oh my God, those poor people, God bless them, I'll say a prayer for them. But it took me going through, like I said, some, some humbling times myself to realize like, I am those people. Like I'm fortunate yeah. to have parents and help and, and, and know people that like, I was between jobs once. I, I didn't lose my car. I didn't lose my apartment. Right. Other people do. And so yeah. Um, it, it changed my world um, to a, a thing that I like to share with people is like sports is what we do. It's not who we are. Mm -hmm. And so it's very mm -hmm. important to surround yourself by people, by issues, by family, whatever, uh, to keep you humble so that you, yes. you are very aware that these things, they do touch us. And yeah. It, it, it doesn't even have to be a black thing. It, it, if there's something that makes a, a, a one of my, you know, I don't know, friends upset, you know, then to me, I feel like, well, if you're upset, tell, talk to me about why you're upset. You know mm -hmm. what? That doesn't sound like it's fair. Like, mm -hmm. so what, what can I do to help make this better? That's kind of mm -hmm. my philosophy sometimes. So yeah. for example, Indianapolis host, uh, um, a pride parade every year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty active in different things going on in our organization. And um, I'm part of the people of color employee engagement group. There's also a, a, a LBGTQ group, as well as mm -hmm. a women's group, as well as a disabilities group. And I attend a lot of those different meetings, even if I don't necessarily, I don't, I'm not disabled. Some people mm -hmm. might be disabled, but I don't, but I, I wanted to, I thought like, I kind of want to, I kind of want to march with these folks. Like some things were going yeah. on in our area that didn't seem right. I have some friends who are a part of the LBGTQ community. Mm -hmm. and, and, but I thought like, Oh my God, if somebody sees me walking, like, are they going to think, it may, yeah. you know what right. I mean? Like my church, people, whatever, whatever. But I just said, you know what? Like I can't. It's the right can't, thing to do at that point in time with That's everything right. that was going on. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. I don't want to think like that because guess what? When things start happening bad to people of color, and they do, and they are, mm -hmm. I don't want my LG, LBGTQ family to be like, well, you know what, Paula, we had a simple little march and you wouldn't even right. really march with us. Right. So why should we be helping you? That's not the only reason. It was one of the reasons. I just... Right. I just wanted to show support and love to them. And it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. One of the first people I saw along the parade route were church members. So mm -hmm. it was it was like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? This is, yeah. just, this is really cool. And it's something I've done every year. And I take it's it's I take great pride in that. Yeah, because we, we all have our differences. Um, we also all have a lot of things in common. Um, but the things that we are if we think differently about certain things or at different upbringings or we're just different people, you, you, you have to understand, you have to respect how someone can be maybe different than you. That's right. um, and, and again, with everything that's going on, it does really emphasize that regardless of your color, your, your, your hairstyle, your, right. you know, your background, one parent, two parent, we're all affected by Absolutely. this and and you know for you as a as a woman um and a, and a black woman how has that affected you when it comes to working within sports oh that's a, another good question we got time Where, we I have know, time right we got time. We have time what time do we have really? we have time so okay. yeah. yes um you know Terrence, i think for me it, it's definitely impacted impacted things sometimes i'm not sure if it's the woman thing sometimes or if it's the the woman of color thing or person of color thing sometimes mm -hmm. but it definitely you know i have had um, situations or workplaces where i've seen um, people advance in their careers um, and and those same opportunities had not been afforded to me mm -hmm. you know now do you ever 100% know? Because no one's ever going to come and tell you, well, because you're a right. woman or because you're a person of color. But you kind of get like a vibe. You, you know, almost you, wish they would. So I know, you right? Just, yeah. Now we all know. It. Now we're, yeah, we're it's all out there. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. So I've definitely had those things happen. I, I also subscribe to a, a, another view, and that's um, what is for me won't be kept from me. Um, okay. And I am just somebody you used the word grind earlier and i feel like that's that's um that's my whole history is just mm -hmm. grind. Mm -hmm. and, and find and joy i guess not so much in promotions and money and those things but if those things never come um i want to have led a life that was pleasing you know um to god pleasing mm -hmm. and, and respectful to the legacy of my family i yep. want to to have left something back for somebody else, another young woman or young woman of color, young person of color, young person period that wants to be in this field. And those are the things that define my success. That was not always how I thought, right. um, but it's, it's how I think now. Um, and, and that works for me. I think yeah. you can dwell on that stuff. It can eat you up. You can be mad. You can bust into people's offices. And, but at the end of the day, I, I do my work. And I live my life yeah. and I, I get joy out of a whole lot of other things other than worrying about um, something withholding right. something from somebody. Right. And, and, yeah. And, and, and you said it, you know, you, you can always look at, look yourself in the mirror and be able to say, you know what, I did things the right way. I, 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 I represented myself and uh, the people I care about in the, in the right manner. And you can live with that live with the results at, the, at that point in time. Because you can – I was always taught as a player, and I apply this now, you can only control what you can control. The controllables, so, right? The controllables, right. So if I can't control something, yeah, yeah it, it may frustrate me. Um, yep. You know, I feel like – I may feel like that's just – that's not right. Um, and it's not going to be right. But in the same breath, I also am like, you know what? I can't give that too much energy because mm -hmm. if I give it too much energy – and it may eat me alive, as you mentioned. Right. So, you know, so so control what you can control um, for the listeners out there, especially, you know, the, the young student athletes coming up. Control what you can control. You, maybe dad's not in your life, right? Maybe coach is not playing you. 
Um, you know, maybe you don't get along with a certain teacher, but whatever you can control, control that, stay focused, stay determined, stay on a narrow path and good things will come. If it's meant for you, it'll come. That's exactly right. And, and I want to touch a little bit, Terrence, on something you said too, and that's character um, and lessons, because I, I really do believe you probably can attest to this as well. Um, I just think there's a lesson in everything, even the things that are not good. Like I've had great uh, supervisors and I've had some that were, that, that were just not great. And, and in fairness, I got to own the fact that I've been great at some things and then I am, have not been good at some things. So um, I want to be an authentic person and I want to own like my stuff. I want to own when I did well, but I also want to own when I have not handled it. It's not it. easy. It's not. not easy. That I'm is not, not easy. I, it is very humbling, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you another piece too. But I, if there's lessons in all of this, so even the even if you have a you've been dealt a bad hand, like what's your lesson out of this? Like how what can you gain from this? Because I promise you, it's going to circle back, and it's yeah. about how you stand at that moment. Even if you don't handle it well, you it'll it'll you'll get a second chance to handle it a little bit differently. Yeah. So what is your character about? What's the lesson? And you, you touched on something else that made me think about this too, is also having a village of people around you um, that you can, that you can go to and say, Hey, listen, this thing has happened. And uh, yeah. what, what do y'all think? Like I handled it this way. What, what advice would you give me? And, and, and a really good village is made up of people. Some that think like you, some that don't old, young, fat, skinny, gay, straight, all nationalities, but somebody in that village will say, you know what, Terrence, you didn't handle that very well. You yeah. know, you, 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 I got to tell you, you played a role in this happening to you. Was it, was it unfair? Yes. But here's what you did. And here's how I think you can make up for that. You owe somebody an apology. Do better next time. Um, share that story with somebody who needs to hear that story. Right. That's what a, that's to me what a what a village does and, and what all this is all about in the end anyway are the lessons. The lessons. I like that. I like that. Um, you know, I would imagine you you work a lot of hours. Um, you do a lot. Uh, you have for a long time. So I'm sure you're an expert now at, you know, balancing home life and work life. How do you if you well, how do you balance it? Let me ask that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's, um, that's always, that's hard. You know, I, I always tell people, this is a topic that comes up at work all the time, like work-life balance. And I have to tell my coworkers, like, cause they want like our supervisors to, you know, our supervisors yeah. know how hard we're working. They ought to like, and I'm like, that's not their responsibility. Like oh. that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like they've hired me to do a job. I have to execute that job. All this mm -hmm. other being tired and stressed out. Now, really good managers will track on that and, and right. will, will flag that for you and help you, you know, get some help if you need it. But they don't have to. Like, they don't have to, right? They, they don't, you know what I mean? So um, I am very intentional about um, how I spend my time. Um, I am intentional about working out. I'm intentional about having a walk, you know, with my, my faith life. I'm intentional about spending time with friends and family. And I'm intentional about all the other things that keep me like balanced. So yeah, I yeah. love books. I'm in a book club. We meet once a month. I, uh, I love, uh, you know, the, the, the giving back to the community. So I carve out time. It's on my calendar. It's on my work calendar, my personal calendar every Monday. I work at our food pantry at our church, unless I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. But even when I don't feel well, sometimes I'm like, oh man, I don't want to go. There's never been a time that I've gone there and it not have been the right decision to do right. it. So, right. you know, y y here's the thing. We can't do it all. You're, you're a husband, um, soon to be father. You're yes. going to face a lot of this front, you know, front and I'm center. I'm not going to know what to do. Oh my gosh. But you know what? You'll, you'll figure it out. Figure it out. You know, you, you, you married somebody who um, enjoys spending time with you before this little person came. So how are you going to protect that relationship and still mm. honor 
your wife and your queen as she is juggling now working and taking care of a baby and probably doing a lot of the house stuff. Um, it's just important to, to prioritize and to be real with the fact that we're not always going to get it right and yeah. that I'm going I'm to miss some stuff. Like, I think it's cool to be invited to a lot of things. Sometimes I'm just like, no, like I can't. Like, I know yeah. it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. Maybe I'll kick myself later. Maybe I'll just go to part of it. Maybe I won't yeah. go to the whole thing. Um, but just to be intentional with how you, how you do things and, and how you prioritize those things that are most important to you. Yeah, yeah. What, if, what career advice would you have for, um, I'm going to say, young student athletes that, you know, have a passion for sports, but again, more than likely will not be a professional athlete? How can they still be involved? Yeah. Um, I think for me, Terrence, like what helped me was I was very well rounded, you know, even as a, as a, a, a student athlete, even in high school, like I was a part of city of, of student council. Um, I played a couple of different sports. I was a part of some different clubs. I did stuff with my church and our youth group. And I, I, I believe what it is, is just kind of tracking on those things that really bring you joy. So, so if you know that it's sports, but you know that you're not going to be on the field or on the court all your life, which no one ever is, just to be fair, everybody's no. not going to the pros. In fact, exactly. most are not. Yep. The average life of an NFL player, the average career span is like three years. If you're lucky, if you're the 1%. If, if you're lucky. And I don't even mm -hmm. know if in three years you get a pension if you play three years. So I think, you, yeah, you, I think you are right on the, on the edge. So yep, you may exactly. not even get a pension. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So always, always kind of diversifying yourself and being, you know, just staying relevant. So um, you, you, we were talking earlier and planning for this podcast and it got me thinking, but I, I enjoy a lot of different things. Um, you, you talked about like my education at IU. I have an aunt who worked in, I believe it was the postal service. And she also did some work with the FBI. So while I love sports, there was no sports management degree. The closest I could find was like telecommunications, but mm -hmm. I also double majored in criminal justice because I thought yes. like if this sports thing doesn't work out and I'm a woman and I'm a woman of color, not really sure at that time how amenable people are going to be to giving me a chance then I'm going to go to the FBI. And I yeah. like am jacked about the opportunity to work in the FBI too. So just, you know, do internships, talk yeah. to different yes. people. I wish I would have done more internships oh my in God. college. And, and it's yeah. hard, I, you know, totally with your schedule, it's hard. But I could have done it looking back. If it was, if, if I was my son at yeah. that point in time, or yeah. that my son was me at that point in time, I would have said, you know what? Yeah. You have limited time in the summer. Yeah. But you need to go do some internships. Absolutely. Sure. And it's not even a formal internship, Terrence. It can be, hey, can I job shadow you? Like, I'm yeah. always on LinkedIn. When I hear, I just uh, heard of this woman the other day. I just pulled up uh, her name, Miss Davis. And she is like a, 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 a boss with the, the National Hockey League. And yeah. I just sent her a little note via LinkedIn. And I go, hey, I am always looking to expand my network um would you be interested in allowing me to be added as you know part of your linkedin group and she accepted it um wow. so it, it's just you know read different things like have a circle of different people i'm always amazed i gotta tell the story right now about how you and i got connected and it, yes it, please do please so do. much so much of this field of sports is relationships and like what is it six degrees of separation yes. so I grew up here in Michigan. I was in Indiana and I would still have doctor's appointments here in Michigan just because I loved all my doctors here. So when I would call for a, a, an annual doctor's appointment, your mom, well, this really cool lady always answered the phone to schedule my appointment. She was <laughs> always pleasant and always positive. And she always made me feel like we were friends, even though we only talked mm -hmm. right. once a year. Yeah, right? that's my mother. So... <laughs> So Miss Darcell one time said, uh, you're in Indiana, right? So do you know Indiana University? And I said, well, not only do I know it, like I, that, I'm an alum of, of okay. Indiana, you know, and she goes, my son plays there. Would you, would you talk to him? I go, 
absolutely. Like that's right up my alley. So wow. I think you and I had some kind of conversation. You were still, you know, playing then. Uh, she later invited me uh, to a game. I think it might have been your a senior it game was. or one of your last yes. games. So I got yep. a picture of all of us in the state, your sisters and family members. You have to send me that, that photo. You have to send me that. <laughs> you have to send me that. All these people, again, who I had never met except for your mom. Right. Yeah. And it was, and, and since then, you and I have stayed connected. You've had some great, you know, career opportunities. You talk about me, you've been coaching, you've lived in a couple of different states. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur, you're doing the training thing. Like you, this podcast, like, is phenomenal. I had no yeah. idea you were doing Thank this. Thank you. But a lot of that, again, just stems from the fact that your mom was so kind and, 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 and stepped out to ask me to talk to you. Yeah, and that's yeah. how a lot so much I can't reiterate to people. I don't always believe it's just who you know. Like you gotta have done the work too, but it certainly does make a difference to know some people yeah. and have some relationships. Yeah, and that and that and that ties back to your original story of you sending a letter <laughs> to the Detroit Lions. Yep. You know, asking for a tour, and then you you, you circle back and you know send your resume and. Yep. And that started your career, you know. And, it, and the lesson from all that, Terrence, is now when people send me a letter or an email or reach out to me via LinkedIn, I'm compelled to respond. Now, sometimes yeah. the response isn't as quick yeah. as I want it to yeah. be, but I'm always going to respond because somebody responded to me yes. and it, and it yeah. made all the difference. It really did. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Wow. Okay. Uh, if 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 you were not in in you know the role you you are in now, what would you be doing? You mentioned criminal justice. Yeah. FBI would that have been the the move? Yeah, I say FBI, but now that I've learned more and more about some of the stuff the FBI does, Get a little older. Yeah. I'm like, like, yeah. I don't know about this whole like telling your family. Yeah, I'm gonna be out for a couple months. Can't tell you where I'm going and what I'm gonna be right. doing, but uh, see y'all soon. Hopefully. That's like, tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. But there are so many different aspects of the FBI. I knowing what I know now, Terrence, I would love to have been and it may still be uh, somebody who has like my own show to talk about different issues that that mean a lot to me. Um, maybe a little like Jabelle Hill, maybe a little mm -hmm. like uh, Oprah, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, just I, I just think to be a host of something and to connect people through conversations. Yeah. And you know this firsthand, like what you're doing is not easy. Um, there is a gift to pulling people together and getting them to talk in a way that is hopefully of interest to your audience. Yeah. Um, and, and I just, I, I'm so intrigued by that. I just think that's the coolest thing. I would. Yeah, no, I've, I've always been interested in it. And, um, my mother would would say this as a when I was a kid, um, and I never really knew what she meant. Um, but now it's it, it resonates with me. She would say, uh, "Oh, that guy or that 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 woman, she has the gift of gab." <laughs> a gift of gab? What does that even mean? But you know the the you know as I you know started doing the podcast and just just meeting people in general, mm -hmm. right? I've always seen myself as a people person. You are. Um, you know, just being able to talk to people, as simple as that. For, for some, it's not the easiest thing to do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's always somewhat came easier to me, but I do understand that, you know, for some out there, they're not comfortable just talking to any and everyone. Um, you know, they freeze up, they don't know what to ask and all those things, but you know, it's something that I'm passionate about and I, and I love to do and it's fun. And anytime you want to come on, you, you could definitely, you can come on, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> I, oh, I love it. I think you and I, like, we can go on. We make a good I, tag more team. Time, so, you know, certainly ask me more questions, but I love this. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, Terrence, when we were prepping for this, I wish I had known when I was in college, like what, this real world really is. I think we take a bunch yeah. of classes, we take tests, and you know, if you're lucky, you get some internships, but in the, it's so important that you have somebody, and again, it doesn't even have to be anybody that you know very well, that just sits down right. with you and says, this is what this really is. I get a lot of people who say, oh my gosh, that's so cool, you work in sports, that must be so awesome. Okay, so let me just, let me just be real here. Yeah. I'm not trying to bust any bubbles. This is real talk Paula. Okay. 
So, so sports is fun and can be fun. I've got friends who make far more money than me though, um, who work like nine to fives at Intel and, you know, even, you know, Nike and some of these places, but even they sit at a desk and stuff. Like I know from day one, I was, wasn't a desk sitter, yeah. but I will tell you, like I tell these other folks who say all this, like when we go to these championships, we're not sitting in the stands watching. Like, You're working. We're, we're yeah. there like at the crack of dawn. We yep. are thinking of every scenario that can happen. All right. Mm-hmm. What if what if the, the the what if there's bad weather? What if uh something bad happens? You know, we're yep. living in a world yep. now where what if somebody gets sick? What if a protest breaks out? What if uh, Somebody you have to shot. think about every scenario. You have to think. You, you know, have to think about, in a way, some things that may go wrong. How we're right. going to put out that fire? And that's exactly right. Yeah. I'm always amazed. We uh, our lacrosse championships have been held for the past couple of years in NFL stadiums, and you know, the NFL has their own protocol for security. So when we go to those venues, we, you know, follow their protocol. They right. have bomb sniffing dogs that come through there, and it is always, you know, we go through extensive, you know security checks they're looking mm-hmm. at every bag and i'm going hey you know me we i was just here yesterday and they, it doesn't they're matter like, they're like hey paul <laughs> hand that bag and that briefcase over yes uh get out of the way the dogs are coming through and it's it's very um uh, it's it's very stressful um i rarely know the name of the team that won the game because a successful yeah. event to me is that the fans and the student the, the student honor student athletes were honored and felt, you know, that, that they had a great time and that our fans were engaged and they had a great time. Rarely the score or who won, but that we have built an event for a lot of these athletes, as you mentioned, student athletes, um, they're not going to go on to the pros. For a lot of them, that's right. their senior year, that last quarter, that last that's down, it. that's it. So how do we capture that? You know, how do we, maybe we do autograph sessions. And, and I always would laugh because some of the coaches would say, we don't want to do autograph sessions. You know, we lost and our kids are crying. And I go, oh, just tell them this. Never in life will they ever have hundreds of people lined up to, to sign. Something. So if they could just gut through it for this yeah. fan that drove from that other state to sit out in the hot sun or sit out in the cold or sit out in the rain and right. cheer y'all on, if they could just find it in themselves to just, you know, gut yeah. through this opportunity, um, I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I will tell you, Terrence, the stories that I could tell you about, to me, what has been great, rarely have anything to do with um, the teams who have won or some of these exciting plays that have happened. Um, uh, several years ago, I, the, um, what do you call it? The Make-A-Wish Foundation reached out to us okay. and said, we have a young man who is, uh, who's battling cancer mm. and, and his wish is to come to a, a lacrosse championship. He's a lacrosse player. And I'm going, his wish is like lacrosse, but you know, Hey, listen, I'm a little jaded. I've been in this thing a long time. I'm thinking there's super bowls. There's right. Right. You know, a bunch of it, but you know, Hey, we're going to make this great. And I, he got to bring a couple buddies. Um, and he, he was very low key. He didn't want to, he was a, probably like a middle school student then, or maybe a freshman, he didn't want a lot of attention. And so I went about talking to different people about creating an experience for him that would be memorable. So um, him and his crew helped me carry the championship trophy to some of the different places in the, in the stadium that we needed to carry it. And I go, Hey guys, listen, you, you aren't special guests, you're workers. So here's your credential. Uh, Let's go. And, and, uh, a couple of the coaches said, hey, Paula, I'd reached out to them in advance. Can we, uh, I, you know, hey, coach, can they sit in on your press conference? Or can they come into your locker room when you think it's appropriate to just kind of, when, when I tell you the yeah. kindness of people, Terrence, mm-hmm. um, that took this young man in, I have now become friends with his family. Four years, they, they come to the cross championship awesome. every year now. Awesome. Um, his screens awesome. have been clear. He. I was going to be attending his high school graduation next month Mm. Um, and not sure with what's going on now that, that they'll even have a graduation, but like, those are the stories that just like, 
this is what is so awesome yeah. about working in sports are, are those stories and what sports mean to so many people. Yeah. Yeah. Out, outside of just what's happening on the field, Absolutely. on the court. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, I'm glad you said it. Um, you know, with, with every role, every profession, I feel like, you know, you're going to, there are a lot of unseen things, you yeah. know, uh, and it seems like your role, it's best when people actually don't know that you're around. Absolutely. That means that things are going how they should be going. Right. right? right. Um, and yeah, whether it's internships, whether it's uh, job shadowing, mm -hmm. um, you know, writing a letter, a writing, writing a letter. letter. Yep. Uh, just find a way to number one, connect, and yeah. then also find a way to, you know, find out the ins and outs of different jobs, different roles. Because I think the last thing anyone wants to do is have a vision of a role <laughs> and then get into that role and be like, you know what, this is yeah. not what I signed up for. And that's, Terrence, so important that you talk to people. This is the point I was trying to make earlier. Just, like, go through LinkedIn, find somebody who's doing something that sounds kind of interesting. If you're reading something on Twitter by somebody that seems like they've got a job that you enjoy, reach yeah. out to them. Like, honestly, here's a secret. People love to talk about themselves and what yeah. they do. <laughs> um, and so you put some questions together. Hey, can I, can I meet you for coffee? Hey, can we do a quick Zoom call? Hey, can I just have 10 minutes of your time to, to find out about how you have gained success in your field and what some of the pitfalls are and what mm -hmm. advice you would have for me? And I so encourage people to do that before you commit to something that is nothing like. Find out the details. What you get to Get the car facts. Oh, please. man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Every experience is different. You might talk to yeah. somebody who says, yeah, this is awful. That That's might not be your too. experience, but at least it gives you a baseline of what different people are, are saying about right. it. If you're a huge fan of sports, I don't know that working in sports necessarily is mm. the best because I work with a, people in the NCAA and other places I've been fortunate enough to work are some of the the smartest, most brilliant sports minds ever. Like when I'm telling mm. you, when we have meetings, you got to bring a game in every meeting. Yeah. They are <laughs> forward thinkers. They are, you know, from a lot of them are That's former cool. student athletes. A lot of them are, um, uh, former managers of sports. Some of them never worked in sports at all, but um, it's not like, like I said, sitting and watching sports. There's a lot of, there's a lot of meetings. There's a yeah. lot of planning calls. Yeah. There's a lot of um, politics. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of personalities that you have to dance around. And, and I will tell you, even when I worked with the Lions, I knew that that was a business, right? It's, yeah. it's the business, it's sport, it's NFL, it's business, it's yep. to make money. It's the shield, yep. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And more and more, even for collegiate, there's, there's a sports aspect of it. And that's mm -hmm. the shift that I've seen over the years is that, you know, we've got corporate sponsors. They have certain expectations of their involvement. And we've got one chance to make it right. Yeah. We can't get to yeah. a game and say, Oh man, we never get that halftime. We ran out of time, so we couldn't show your uh, spot on the video board. Not trying uh, to hear that. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that don't worry about not... working with us next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly yeah. right. What are you uh, curious about or interested in currently? Ah, mm. oh, so much, Terrence. I am. I'm curious about the future of, uh, of college athletics. Um, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of uh, talks going on now about um, interests that student athletes have and how they would like to be honored and how they would like to have um, some say over their brand and, and, mm -hmm. and their contributions to a team. That, that's kind of intriguing to me as that was something that was never Right. You know, in play when I was yeah, playing and right. even as recently as you no, play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested in the intersection of, of entertainment and sports. Um, you know, there is a lot of synergy there and I'm always yeah. intrigued when I go to different games and there's a concert that takes place at halftime or right. there's uh, there's music that's playing or 
music sometimes is playing over the top of the play mm -hmm. because everybody that comes to a game is not necessarily there just to see the game. Some no. people are there because their buddies are there. It's a social outing. Some people want the dance and part of it. So uh, all that intrigues me. Um, I, you asked a really good question about um, some of the things that, I, that, that interest me, some shows. Um, I, you know, I, gosh, it's, it's just <laughs> all fascinating. Like, let me just say this. It's yeah. just never boring. It's never boring. Yeah. Are you more of a, uh, of a TV person or a book reader? Uh, a little bit of both, a little bit yeah. of both. Yeah. I got into this Netflix thing and I, telecommunications was like my major. And so mm -hmm. I have same, always same, loved by the TV. Way. Yes. yes. Awesome. I yeah. sleep with the TV on. I, I tell you, I probably never really legit sleep because I'm always like just tuning into different things. Yeah. But so my Netflix stuff, like I just started binging recently because when I get hooked, like I'm hooked and I can't That's put it down. my wife is. Yeah, she can. I, see, I can put it down, but no. I understand also the other side of it where you just want to watch and finish I, it. I will not sleep until I have watched the whole series. So I got okay. into it. This, this gives you a little a little insight into me. So. For for Netflix stuff, I got into Ozark. I got into uh, Great show. Uh, All American, uh, mm -hmm. Shit, Shit's Creek. Yep, um, watch that. Yep. I, oh my gosh! I started right now. I got a whole <laughs> list of ones that I got to go back and catch. Insecure. That's not um, Netflix necessarily. That's HBO. But a that Great I show. love. I love 60 Minutes. Like I for from like classic. You know, I love 60 Minutes. Like I, you know, All Rise is a show on CBS that's uh, that shows um, a woman who's a, a judge and how she handles some of the cases that come before her in Los Angeles. Like my criminal justice, I've always just in, yeah. been intrigued by yeah. that. I love like my mom. She was she's around here somewhere. I love judges shows. I love Judge Judy. I love Judge Mathis. I love people's mm -hmm. court. Like, yeah. I just, there's so yeah. much good That's stuff cool. out there. Yeah. So I'm That's always cool. up for suggestions. I think this stuff kind of helps you grow and keeps you relevant, probably keeps you young in a lot of ways too. Yeah. Even stuff that I don't agree with, Terrence. Like I follow some people on Twitter, for example, that I'm like, that, what, that person is the biggest bonehead in the world. Yeah. But like. The different side of it. You, you get that, their take on it. That's yeah. exactly right. And while we may never agree, like, okay, I, I, I kind of see where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Still don't agree, but it's helpful to always be open to just different, different shows, different ways of thinking, different people. Right. Right. I love that, man. That, that, that shows why, uh, you know, why you've had such a successful career um, as you have, and you're, you're still obviously immersed in it. And, you know, you're someone that can, can listen to the other side, uh, you know, but you're still also someone that believes in your side of it as well. Um, and, you know, you, you stick to your guns, um, as they say. So um, I don't think you are ready for this. I'm pretty sure, I know you aren't because I haven't sent you this part of the, uh, of, of the script, but uh, we have our rapid fire segment. So this oh. is a great fun way um, for people to get, more of a personal side, uh, you know, you, you get to kind of get your take on a, on a couple different things. So uh, let's have fun with it. And I'm going to ask you, are you ready for the rapid fire segment? I guess as I ready am as you're ready gonna be. <laughs> for the rapid fire segment. Let me get another sip of water. Yep, do that. You only have five seconds to answer each question. Yes, <laughs> by the way. Okay. <laughs> you like how I gave you that after I already asked, are you ready for it? So you already said you're ready, so you're committed. You know what I love? Being um, in sports, like this it has not knocked me off my square because we have to be ready for, for anything. I can tell. You're a cool comic collector right now. Here like we go. That. Bring it. All right, here we go. Passenger or the driver? Driver. Okay. Cups and your cup board, are they right side up or upside down? Upside down. Okay. I think we go right side up. So, no, we kind of do the thing where they're upside down and they're right side up, right on top of them. Oh, okay. Oh, Done that's that. cool. Really Done well. that. Um, okay. When you get a chance to go to the movies. Um, love the movies. You, I love going to the movies. Yes. 
Um, do you eat popcorn or are you more of a candy person? Popcorn. Popcorn. Okay. Would you Lots rather, of butter. Lots of butter. Lots of butter. You may as well indulge. Yes. Um, would you rather live in a world full of robots or full of aliens? Ooh. Robots? Robots? Yeah. I am legend? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, favorite genre of music? Oh, no. Oh, no, Terrence. I'm getting ready to do a Facebook post <laughs> right now because I'm over my phone. <laughs> All of them. All of them? All of them. Okay. All right. I'll let, uh, if you come back on uh, another time, you'll have to have one answer, but I'll let that slide for right now. Okay. Um, what is your favorite place to eat in Indianapolis? Your one spot. Ted's Montana Grill. A, um, mm. Either a, <laughs> a burger or um, a ribeye steak. Nice. Good, good. I love that. Oh, yeah. you're making me hungry. Uh, honesty or other people's feelings? What do you choose? Honesty. Yep, that's policy. Oceans or mountains? Oceans. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the highest, how weird can you be? Ten. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Ten. Good. Eleven. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I know. I think eight is like the, the lowest I ever get on that. So that's good. Um, what is something that you are afraid of? Um, um, uh, how do I want to say this? Lack of authenticity. Okay. I understand. I understand. Be yourself, right? Yeah. Look yourself in the mirror and be able yep. to say, you know what? I did it how I should do it. Um, and lastly, what is the most precious thing in your life? Oh, my family. Family? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, hey, do you, you want me to go back on that genre of music if you're forcing me? Why not? Okay. We're here. Why not? It, it would be like smooth jazz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that has like, grown on me over the years. Yeah, yes. it's, it's calming. I, I feel yes. like it, it just, I'll, I'll have it playing in the background, especially if I'm getting like really amped up. I love going to outdoor concerts. Those concerts are so chill. People are just mm -hmm. laid back. So mm -hmm. while I love a lot of different music, I really do. Um, if I had to pick one, it would be smooth jazz. You know what? Um, and I think it's just my parents and how I grew up. I think for me, Something that has really grown on me has been uh, like 70s, 80s uh, oh. funk. Oh, yes. I yeah. like that. But Look smooth jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth jazz has been good, too, because we have the Google uh, speakers here. Yep. And uh, like every morning or every, you know, uh, afternoon, we play some smooth jazz. And, it, oh. and like you said, it's calming. I can still work and, and have yeah. it in the background and not uh, not be distracted by it. So. And you'll see yeah. with, with, with your baby, like, <laughs> I think babies vibe off of it, too. Serious. We did yeah. that with my nephew, and it just calmed him down and just calmed us down. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Enjoy Music it. could do that. Yeah. Well, this was fun. This is this really good. I, I, I thank you for, for coming on. I know you're extremely busy. Um, you're someone that people are always pulling at you to do this and that, but I, I thank you for taking the time out of your day and, and, and be able to give a lot of insight on what you do, who you are, and um, great advice as well. So I thank you. If anyone wants to check you out, maybe via LinkedIn or yep. however they need to check you out, where can they find you? LinkedIn is probably the, the best place to, to get me. And, um, you know, I'm certainly on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram and Facebook. I'll ask if you hit me up on LinkedIn, just, just shoot me a little note to, to remind me about how we, how we connect. Right. So you can yes. say coach tease. I'm, I'm trying to be intentional, like about, you know, who I'm having in my network. I don't mm -hmm. turn down mm -hmm. really anybody per se, but you know, I, I just, I you just, never know. Yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's it. Yep. Hey, Terrence, before we go, I want to ask you just something, just kind of turn the table a little bit yeah. if, we, if we have time. And that is like, how can, I know you've got a vast array of different, you know, audience members, but mm -hmm. from your perspective, like how can somebody like me be of help to, to others? Um, in your role that you have? 
Yeah. Um, you know, I think the best way you can be of help to others, um, we hit on it earlier, is to showcase and really give in detail what other roles are, are out there for individuals that are, again, you're working in sports, yes, but you're not the athlete. So what, what, what other roles are out there? And I think you do that. And I think just being able to, because if I would have had, you know, I, I, I knew of you in college, but even if I would have had, you know, in a conversation with you in college um, and I would have reached out and been able to do that, I think it would have helped me really, you know, pick up on, whoa, there are a lot of roles you know, in sports, because I, I am passionate about it. And, oh. and, and even without sports, I'm just passionate about, you know, talking to other people, right? Feeding off other people's energy. Yeah. And, I, and I think a role like that has been something that, you know, I do now. And right. it would have helped to know that back then, like, hey, you just want to be around people, Terrence. Like, that's all, you, that's what you want to do. So, right. um, you know, you can go this role, you can do X, Y, and Z, these things fit you. And I think um, that's where you can be a huge help, just okay. showcasing, hey, like, this is what I do, yes, but these are also some other roles and, you know, your, your personality fits this type of role. So maybe you wanna think about that. So I think that helps, especially, again, the next generation of, uh, of student athletes. Okay. Hey, so Terrence, let's do a follow-up one of these. Please. And, and maybe, yeah. and maybe, maybe you can poll your audience and, um, cause that's like a whole nother conversation in itself. Like, um, yes. I, there, you know, certainly there's collegiate athletics, you know, in an athletic department, there's pro sports, but there are companies like Visa that has like a sports marketing arm because Visa is an mm. international sponsor. I did not know that of like the Olympics, like a lot of banks, okay. like a lot of these big corporate, there are agencies, but you know, maybe poll your audience and, and um, find out what they want. And I, I'm happy to come back and just talk a little bit about, hey, I talked to some of my friends in the industry, Here, here's a, a, a position or a, a track, a career track yeah. that would fit somebody who dot, dot, dot. Yeah, here's or here's would, something where, yep. hey, this is going to grow within the next 10, 15 years, and maybe you can want to get into it if you're, if you're in high school. Absolutely. You know? And um, at, uh, grad school certainly is an option. We, we can hit on that. Um, I certainly mm -hmm. know from people who are pro-grad school and getting a master's and some who are like, you don't need to do that. But let's delve a little bit into that. And then I'll yeah, I would we'll love to. Yeah. And I, I got just names of folks in my network, if your audience says, hey, I want to talk to somebody who works in, you know, the front office of a, of a pro team. So that yeah, awesome. I'm all, that's that what would be we good. Do. Yep. That would be good. And it's funny that you say that because, you know, me, you know, also working at a high school and, and, and being a counselor um, on top of being a coach, there's so many high school kids that I talk to. I'm mm -hmm. like, Hey, you know, what do you want to do? Right. You know, what, what's going to be your career? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really thought of that. Right. I'm like, well, what are you going to study in college? I don't know. I haven't really thought of that. I'm like, well, you may want to start thinking about it because uh, looking at the clock, you, you're going to be in college in, in a year or two. So, you know, you right. may want to start thinking about that. But I, I, I think the more they know, because they hear the traditional roles, right? Sure. Um, sure. But there are a lot of roles that oh they just God. never hear about. So oh if God. they actually heard about it, I mean, they're, they're going to they may be interested and you never know if you flip over that stone, what you actually may find. So Man, I'm thinking of like agents. I'm thinking, I love this LeBron James story and how he pulled his crew when he played, you know, in, in, in what was that? Canton, in Ohio. High yeah. yep. A crew yep. of, of, of buddies. And he basically, you know, went into the, into the NBA without, you know, having to go without going, making the choice to go to college, but mm -hmm. pulled his crew along. And then from what I have understood, those who wanted to go on and get degrees or special yeah. certifications or whatever. So some I'm of them a big LeBron like, fan, so yes. Oh my God. Huge. Yes. Like what he has done, like so some are agents, some are mm -hmm. handling like the the negotiations of his yep. of his deals. Some are ha handling his charitable yep. stuff and the stuff Production that he's doing with the uh, I right. promise school. Yep. Like that is phenomenal and there are all those kinds of jobs you know you, you asked a little bit what I want to do next and it will be a job that allows me to th th there will be an intersection of sports and entertainment but there will also be a philanthropic and a social responsibility arm to that awesome yes, Community yes engagement, that fits you, you fan engagement I know I um, what, what did I tell somebody I'm going to be I'm going to be the chief 
connections officer or something like something that ties all those yeah. things together. So yeah. I, I'm going to find it or else I'm going to create it, but let's, um, let's follow up Terrence. I, I love what you're doing. I think it's great. And I think this is a step in, in giving some, giving a whole lot of people some insight into a world that maybe people see from TV or attending a game, but um, there's a whole lot more to it. I'm blessed to have been in this field this long. Yes. It yes. is, it is, uh, I'm not going to lie. It's not always um, uh, uh, roses and, and rainbows, but um, on its face and what, what, what it stands for um, has aligned with what's important to me. And that's, connecting people, allowing people an opportunity to, to give their best and to perform mm -hmm. and, and to give back. Wow. Well, there you have it. I, I, I thank you again. Uh, I would love to do this again, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, you have a lot of insight, you have a lot of great advice and a lot of great experience that, uh, that you can share with the world. So thank, thank you. you. God bless. Um, yeah. And you guys stay safe during these times. And my email, my phone is, is always on. So we'll, uh, we'll connect and we'll do this again. So Sounds thank you. good. Hello to your mom. Oh, yes. Yes. I would tell her. <laughs> I'm going to call All her right, right after this. So. Okay. Sounds good, Taryn. We'll follow up. So thanks for everything. Yes. All, All right. right. God bless. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye now.